Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the impact of own noise on trying to detect a submerged target. So um, often you know that when we're doing some kind of ASW work, anti-submarine warfare, we're going to be kind of tooling around the ocean at low speeds, at constantly listening for anything that can possibly come along our lines so that we can go ahead and detect it and hopefully identify and hopefully engage it as early as possible. Another advantage of course you have while going relatively slow is the fact that it makes you more difficult to detect. So what we're going to take a look at today is just how much of an impact you actually have when you have a different speed and you're trying to detect something underwater. So well, let's take a look at a little scenario here. So right now we have a group of uh, Oliver Hazard Perrys. Apparently this is the entire Perry fleet. I know there's a few more, but I'm just having some fun here. And each one of these is cruising along at a different speed. This one right here is at 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and 33 knots speed, which is the absolute maximum flank speed for these particular vessels. A uh, little do each one of these vessels know, but there is a boomer basically sitting underneath them. In this case, it is a PLA-659T Echo-1, which is a pretty old school uh, combat submarine. As a matter of fact, I'm going to confirm that to make sure I'm not insane. Yes, it's a PLA, so it's atomic. Got it. So this particular operation, we're simply going to have our two items run over each other and see when the other one gets detected. Now, this should be interesting because there might be a couple little surprises here. The first thing we'll notice is the fact that this particular ship, this one, this one, but not these, have the ability to deploy their towed array sonars. Now, if you remember, towed array sonars have a specific depth that they're operating at. In this case, all of our uh, attack submarines here are all operating at uh, about 200 feet uh, shallow. So as a result, our uh, wonderful, wonderful towed array system may see over them. And that uh, kind of creates an interesting little situation, but you'll see what I mean when we do this. All right, let's go see if the results work out the way we expect. So again, we're just kind of cruising along, cruising along. Just cruising, nothing bad happened. Uh, we've made no detections at this point. I'm using God's eye view so you can see everything pretty clearly here. Just cruising, just cruising, nothing. Not getting any angry alarms or anything along those lines. Go ahead and bring up the message log in case anything comes. We'll actually clear out the message log as well. Let's see here, game. I'll go ahead and clear that out later. Ah, I'm gonna worry about it later. All right, pause. So let's see what just happened. So we sailed over the top of this submarine and never even began to detect it. Uh, this guy right here is about to sail over that submarine. Let's see what happens. No detection. Okay, so 30 knots is right out for ASW. Let's see what happens at 25 knots. Nothing. So 25 is out for ASW. Looks like in this case, so we're going to have to adjust our alignment a little bit here just to make it fair. Let's see what happens at 20 knots. Ah, there we go. We got something. All right, so what distance did we detect them at? So we detect this SSN at a distance of 1.1 nautical miles. Okay, so we know that 20 knots is viable if you can get within a mile of something. All right, let's see how things are doing. I'm sorry, 25 knots. Let's see how things are at 20 knots. So we're still cruising, we're cruising, we're cruising. Bingo, we've detected an SSN. All right, this one is at a distance of 1.5. That one, if you recall, we detected at a distance of about 1.6. In this case, we're just estimating how far away it's gotten away from us. Interesting. So the difference between these two speeds is actually not that much, 20 and 25. Both will get you about a three or four mile detection on a good day. Uh, let's see what happens now when you throw in a 10 knot movement. I should say, you can, oh, I'm sorry, I missed this one a moment ago. We should take a look. We also have the one that detected it at 15 knots. Let's see how he did as far as his detection goes. Uh, detected at 1.5. So 15, 20, and 25 knots are all within 0.3 nautical miles of making a detection. Interesting. Now, what about our folks with the towed array sonars? Uh, what happens when this guy gets into range? Uh, let's see what happens here. Cruising along, cruising along. He's only doing 10 knots, which is considered to be a pretty safe uh, listening speed. Still no detection. Oh, we got an event here. Yeah, it's just me uh, changing uh, vision modes here. Still no detection. And there it is. We have a brand new platform underwater. We detected him at a distance of... 19 nautical miles. Uh, that's actually pretty impressive. Well, let me zoom in uh, quite a bit here. Of course, it wasn't actually 19 nautical miles. I think our detection time came at about three and a half nautical miles. So I believe that may have just been a, a misprint there when it was doing the initial analysis. But we were able to identify it as that particular class. In this case, uh, we got about 3.5 nautical miles. That's more of what I expected. So even with our towed array, it took us till we got to three and a half miles. So half the speed gave us twice the detection radius. All right, so now we're taking our five knot one. This is one we're really expecting to be a wildly, wildly successful here. And uh, let's see what happens. So again, he's doing five knots, which is that sweet ASW speed. Kind of moving, kind of moving, kind of moving. Make sure that he gets close enough to actually cover over the top of this guy. There we go. Clean out my message log again. 
heard something. All right, contact change. So we did detect something. Let's take a look. We detected them at 5.7 nautical miles. This has been a spectacular difference. So in this particular one, if you recall, we basically picked them up at about 4.6 or so. This guy, we've gained almost a mile, 1.8 nautical miles in exchange for five knots of speed. So we're doing half the distance, but we're not getting more than twice the detection range. Now, what you're probably most interested in is gonna be this guy up here, the um, one that is actually parked. So we'll go ahead and uh, fast forward things a little bit here and see if the guy who's parked has the ability to go ahead and identify that one underwater. He's just chilling, just chilling. Oh, there we go, we got an event. I think this is just God's eye view. Yeah, that was me. Oh, contact change. Let's see what we got here. SSN one vanished. Yeah, they got a little far away. Doesn't surprise me. All right, speed up time here. You would think this guy would pick him up really early, right? I think you'll actually be surprised to see just how close you can get with a submarine before you'll reliably... Oh, there he is. Let's see here. He was detected at 6.3. So as you can see, going 5 knots or 0 knots gives you the exact same detection radius. However, going at 10 knots takes about 2 nautical miles off your detection radius for about 4 nautical miles. And doing any of these speeds of 15, 20, 25... Um, basically is going to reduce your maximum detection radius to about one mile or so nautical mile. So that's sort of interesting. But what happens if we try to do this with active sonar as opposed to passive sonar? So let's go ahead and uh, open everything back up again. Get it all warmed up. And uh, I'm going to order my entire side to go ahead and go with active sonar. Now, fortunately, the folks underwater are smart enough to know, don't freak out. Now, we would expect the detection ranges to be about the same, even though we're using a slightly different technique here. So let's kind of see how the things play out. I think we got our first detection here. Remember, this guy's doing flank speed. Come on, flank speed, flank speed. And he sails right over the top of him. That happens. All right, our next buddy, he's doing 30 knots. Remember, we had no detection last time. Sails over the top of him. 25 knots, we had a last second detection, if you recall, last time. So I'll go ahead and adjust him to make sure I'm not hitting him at a funky angle or anything like that. We actually have to make sure he's in the range of the active sonar. Let's see here. We'll go just make a quick little adjustment here. Make a quick little adjustment here. Ooh, this guy's way off. I'll do a little adjustment here. Make sure they're crossing paths. That looks good. And we're not going to worry about that other one yet. Okay, back to what we see. All right, let's see what the 25 knot. Remember, this guy detected him at a little less than... Oh, there it is. So um, we never... Let's see here. ANSQS 56. ANSQS 56 is active passive. Uh, so we were actually able to detect him at 1.4 nautical miles, which is exactly the same. So let's go ahead and see what happens at 20 knots here. Pause. All right, see how we did here. Uh, we were able to detect him at uh, 1.9. So actually, we did a little bit better. Our active sonar is actually more effective, even though we are still hauling ass right now, basically doing, uh, let's see here. We got a total speed of uh, 20 knots. Okay, let's see how this uh, guy does right here. Remember, it's 20 knots. Uh, we detected him at 2 nautical miles. So these speeds don't matter much if you're at active sonar between 20 and 25 knots. So let's see what happens when we get to, I should say, 15, 20, and 25 knots. Let's see what happens when we get all the way down to 10 knots. Now, you probably are sitting there going, eh, you're not going to detect him until you're right on top of him. Now, let's go ahead and find out. Remember, these guys all have active sonar right now. Pause. Let's see, we detected him at 5 nautical miles, which is actually the best we've detected so far at 10 knots. All right, let's go ahead and see what happens at our 5.6 here. Again, this shows you how garbage active sonar really is. Make sure they don't hit at a funny angle here. incredible pause let's see our initial was about five nautical miles so we actually have expanded our range a teeny tiny bit using active sonar but it's basically a negligible increase now meanwhile this guy is not making any noise at all he's just chilling here let's see how long it takes him to actually detect that other submarine now keep in mind all subs are the same they're all moving at 10 knots imagine how difficult this would be if they're moving at two knots or they're diesels Moves right into range. Yep, there he is. Let's see here. Initial range, 5.6. So you can see that our active sonar enables us to detect targets out to 6 miles up to about 15 knots. Now, once we cross the kind of into the cavitation range, we lose our ability to actively reliably engage. 
So hopefully this video is helpful. Uh, generally, if you're looking for some takeaways here, the one thing you want to keep in mind is if you're doing anything greater than 20 knots, uh, you're probably detectable, but you can increase a little teeny tiny bit of your detection radius if you use active sonar. Anything under 15 knots is going to be pretty ideal. The difference between 5 and 10 knots worked out to be about 1 nautical miles. It's about a 20% increase in detection range if you lose 5 knots. Obviously, those that 20% can be massive if you're dealing with a very, very quiet target. We were also able to identify the fact that our big old frigate here, not moving at all, had no specific benefit for its ability to go ahead and listen underwater. Enjoy.